Hey there folks, Piano Man Steve Lundgren here and I'm just offering up another one of my free YouTube tutorials. Today we're going to be working on Bad Bad Leroy Brown by Jim Croce. Great tune and um, I'm not going to, you'll see exactly what we're getting at. I'm going to show you the basic pattern you can use for the whole song and then of course you can put your own spin on it if you want. Music is an interpretive art. Um, and I'll get my advertising out of the way. For those of you who don't know, I do teach video piano lessons. Up in the top left hand corner of your screen, you will see that uh, my website's posted there. It's www.pianomansteve.com. Um, and that's where you can learn all, all the tricks that I've learned about playing rock, pop, and country music over the last 20 some years. So, without further ado, now that you know about that, we will get into. Bad Bad Leroy Brown. It opens with kind of a fun, it's actually pretty simple, but it's a fun and kind of iconic sounding little piano intro that sounds like this. Okay, so let's look at that section real quick because that's going to be kind of an important building block for the whole tune. What you're going to do is, here's middle C. I need you to find, uh, you need to form a G chord in its um, first inversion with your thumb on the B below middle C, D above middle C, and G above middle C right here like that. So we're in the key of G. And then with your left pinky, I need you to find, here's the G below middle C, find a G an octave below that. That's where your pinky goes. And your index finger goes up here on D, which is the 5 of that chord. For those of you who know your chord numbers, and if you don't, that's fine. Just watch my hands. You don't need to know all the theory in the world to do this. Okay? So what your left hand is going to be doing, you're on these two notes. And your thumb is going to come down on E, so it looks like this. Rhythm, dum dum bum 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 bum. At full speed, it's like this. Okay, but and I do try to keep my fingers out of the way so you can see what what notes I'm hitting. But uh, obviously, you're not going to want to play it like this. You're going to want to have your hand up on the piano. So anyway, here we go. It looks like this. Dum dum bum dum bum 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 bum. See that? One, two times through, three, four, five, six on the seventh time through. Which works out nice because on the seventh time through that. You come up here and you play the seventh, which is an F. So take a look at that again. Here we go. Okay. So what's the right hand doing at that same time? Your right hand is on this G chord that we talked about, B, D, and G, and it is going like so. See? You're playing G the whole time, and then it's you have your B and your D here, moving up to a C and an E. You can do this however you like. I do it like this. So fingering wise, I tend to go. I move my thumb, but then I play the E with my third finger. That's what's comfortable for me. That's not how you absolutely have to do it. 
you need to pick a fingering that feels comfortable to you. Now I think that the lion's share of the people in the world will find this to be the most comfortable fingering. Okay? But it doesn't make it the right one. That's one thing I hate about regular piano teachers is that they're walking around slapping your wrist with rulers and saying this is how you have to do it. This is the right technique. This is the right this. This is the right that. B.S. Whatever feels the most natural and comfortable to you is the right thing for you to do because that's what's going to make it the easiest to play. And the easier it is to play, the more fun you can have, and the more fun you can have, the more you'll actually practice and get better. So whatever works for you is fine. This is what works for me. Okay? So when you put those two things together, it's like this. Now, when on that seventh time through, you've gone and then you come down on F and D. So here, 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 here. Again, slower. Okay, so I'm going to play through that whole opening sequence kind of slow. Okay. Okay, so that's where we're at and at full speed. It's like. Okay, now you just play the, the kind of the same thing in the right hand, and instead of playing here, your left hand goes down and it goes to a G and it goes G, E, D, E, G, E, D, E, G. Okay? So watch how that plays out. Okay? Okay, now let me play that a little slower so you can see it. We've come out of this. Okay, now the final step in this is that you go to a D and what I do, you can do anything you want, but it's a D chord. It can be a D7 if you want, like this, with a C in there, F sharp A, C and D, or you can just play a plain old D major chord. If that's easier, you can play it in three notes. You can play it with four notes. You can play it here. It does not matter, but it's a D chord. And it's ba dump ba dump ba dump bum. Okay, now what I like to do personally is I like to put my pinky up here on a D and then play the D chord D, A, and F sharp here. And then I like to play the minor third with it along with the major third and it gives it kind of a dirty kind of rebellious see now I don't know that that's really what's on the recording that's just my take on it that's what I like to do with it you can do what you like to do with it if you want to do what I'm doing I'll show you what I'm doing but just know that it's a D chord you can play it here or here or here a seventh or a ninth even I don't care what you do with it it's a D chord so let me show you how this all plays out in context remember my thing is octave D's in the bass and here 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 and here 
that's what I like to do. So watch how this plays out in context. again. Okay, so that brings us to the rest of the song, and basically what you're going to do is you're going to keep playing your in your right hand along with this in the left. Okay, now the trick is we're going to take that exact pattern, we're going to move it up a whole step, so we're going to move up to the key of A, okay? and it's A, E, and C sharp with a D and an F sharp as your alternating notes like this. Okay, so watch that. Down here in the bass it's A, F sharp, E F sharp A, F sharp E, okay? Then we go to one more whole step up, which is B, B major, so it's B with E flat or D sharp, however you like to say it, and F sharp or G flat, however you like to say it, okay? And your alternating notes are E and G sharp, down here you're going B, G sharp, F sharp, okay? Okay, so I want you to get that pattern under your fingers. to C, the exact same thing, and it's C with an, a C chord, E and G, F and A are your alternating chords, and it's C, A, G, okay, now watch how that whole line plays itself out here, so you were in G, this point because where it goes is a D chord, then a C chord, then back to a G, then back to your okay? So here's what I tend to do. I play a D chord and I go just a plain old D chord like so. Then I play what's called the C dominant ninth chord which is technically C, E, G, B flat, and D. The reason I do that is because my pinky's already on a D, okay? So I had played a D chord here. This allows me to keep on a D chord and have kind of a little bit of a flavor, kind of a rocky flavor. That's what a ninth does. It's got kind of a rebellious, kind of rocking, hard-edged flavor. Bum, bum, bluesy. So I like to do that. Bum, 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 bum. 
So what are we doing in the right hand? You've got a full D chord here. D, F sharp, A, and D. One, two, and then I move to a C bass, and it's E, G, B flat, and D. Bum, bum. So, bum, 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 bum. And then it's time for a G chord, which I usually play a G7, like that. D, B, and F with a G bass. Bum. And then we're ready to go. Bum, 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 bum. Okay? So, those are the components. Here's what it looks like. We've gone... So even slower. One, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and. Bum, 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 bum. See where we're going with that? So, one more time, I'm going to play through the entire line from the intro all the way to that point, just so you can see it in context. I'll play it a little bit slower than regular tempo. time for you just for the repetition then I'll um, explain where we go when the chorus comes in. You just play that twice through, basically. You just play that twice in a row. And then when the chorus comes in, you do exactly what you've done previous now with your uh, right hand, that entire line, except now your left hand goes into a walking bass under it. So it looks like this. G, B, D, E, G, B, D, E. One, two, three, four. C sharp, E, F sharp. If you know the, if you know your chords well enough, and you can identify one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in your chord, it's one, three, five, six. One, two, or one, three, five, six. Then in A, it's one, three, five, six as well. So A, C sharp, E, F sharp, A, C sharp, E, F sharp, B, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp. C, E, G, A, D, D, C, C, G, D, 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 D. So you know that. Dun, 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 dun. I love this song, but it's one of the most repetitive things you'll ever hear in your life. So again, here's the, um, here's the bass. One more 
time. So when you throw that, what we have already learned for the right hand in there, it's like this. Let me do that again. do both hands together I'm gonna to do it really really slow Okay, having known those things, you basically know the whole song. It's just at the end of the song, there's a tagline where it goes to this spot on the B, on the B chord. Okay, so what you're going to want to do at the very end is go bum, 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 and then it goes on the left hand, you want to go G, E, D, G. Ba, da, dum, ba. Ba, do, do, ba. And then play a G7 chord. Anywhere you want, I usually do it right here. D, F, B, and D. Ba, da, dum, ba. And then you can just kind of move your, you know, just kind of pivot, kind of hinge your, your hands like this. To, you can throw a glissando in up here and go yeah, bum on your G. Yeah, bum. Bum, yeah, bum. Okay? So, I'm not allowed to sing through the entire song and show you how it, how it fits together. Uh, that's, that's a copyright violation. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play, uh, I'm going to play the intro and then I'm going to play through one verse, one chorus and pretend like we've gone to the end of the tune so you can see how it all fits together. And then you'll just have to listen to your copy of it to know how many, but I think there's like four verses, something like that. So, um, but it looks like this. That's the song, you know. Now all, all you have to do is get each of those different parts under your fingers and then get familiar with the form of the song and you can play it tomorrow. 
It is not that complicated, gang. So I hope you enjoyed this. I love that tune. I love playing it for people. I do it live every time. I don't think I've played a gig in the last 15 years where I didn't play that tune. Always is a showstopper. People love it. And um, I've had a lot of fun teaching it to you. Head over to uh, pianomansteve.com, learn more about my lesson videos. Um, I do do some song tutorials and I do a lot of good uh, just general rock, pop, and country lesson videos. And I write my blog uh, almost every day. I put something up. So come join our community. We'd love to have you. And I hope that you're having a great day. Take care. Oh, and remember, if you're not having fun when you're making music, you're doing it wrong. I'm Piano Man Steve Lunger and I'm out of here.